And a very big welcome everyone to another edition of Mobile Rolling here at the House of Chow restaurant. A big thank you again to House of Chow for their consistent support of this program during the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, we've been doing these podcast series and these interviews for a couple of weeks now. And uh, we're joined today by Stephen and Suzanne Grace. We'll be talking to them very shortly. And stay with us on Mobile Rolling. Another great interview coming up. Stephen and Suzanne, welcome. Great to have you on. Now we'll kick off things. How did you two meet? Ah, uh, I used to work at a riding school yeah. uh, at Gloucester in the Riverland. Yep. And Stephen came down there to shoe a couple of horses for yep. the owner. And then someone dared him to ask me out. Yeah. So he did. And it was on a, a trot night at Barmer. Yep. And he was supposed to pick me up and he didn't. <laughs> he forgot. And then uh, his horse got pulled down in the race and had two horses go over the top of him. And yep. He limped in the next day and said, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barmer, well, it was um, Barmer Trots. Barmer Trots back in the day. So um, you obviously came from the Riverland. Uh, you born, born up there? Raised, yeah. Born raised, born raised, yeah. Uh, Stephen, where were you born and raised? Uh, I was born in Victoria, but mainly out in the sheep station. Yep. Awesome. North, north of Broken Hill. Yep. Mm. Uh, one thing I learned before I did this interview, I didn't know this actually until today, where was there, there was some involvement in the thoroughbreds and the greyhounds as well. Mm. Uh, tell us a little bit more about how you got your start in racing and which code uh, really started off for, started off for you, Suzanne. Uh, gallopers. Yep. Uh, Stephen wanted to get a galloper mm -hmm. and his cousin uh, was the stud master at Tudorval Thoroughbred Stud, what was here in Adelaide. Yep. And his cousin uh, uh, got a horse for us on lease. Yep. And six weeks before the lease, they uh, rang and gave us the option to buy her, which we bought her for $2,000, which yep. wasn't a lot. Uh, and that, so we thought, oh, why not? Yep. And six weeks later, she won at Berry at 50 to 1 and won the race. And I had $20 each, dollar, $20 each way on her, so we got our purchase price back. And in there six we weeks after, can't, can't complain. Race, can't <laughs> complain, no. Oh. Uh, Stephen, your involvement in harness racing, how did that all start for you? We uh, started up in Broken Hill. Yep. Met a couple of fellows up there and they had horses and that and sort of got interested into it and they basically talked me into it. Yep. Go and buy one. Yeah. Mm. Um, Greyhound racing as well, that was the third code you were involved in. Uh, Suzanne, tell us a little bit more about your involvement in uh, greyhound racing. Uh, I was having a lot of problems with my health at yep. the time and my doctor advised me to walk a dog. Yep. So I got two greyhounds <laughs> <laughs> and uh, was walking them uh, not, then not three mile in the morning and two mile at night, which is what I was told what yep. to do and and uh, gradually sort of got into it. We were raced at Barmer when I was only racing for bottles of wine then, yep. this is before they actually got their uh, full licence. Mm -hmm. And uh, won a few races with a, a dog called Growl Jacada, yep. which was the first two initials of my uncle's family. Yep. And they got this name together and that. And uh, yeah, she, she won a few bottles of wine for yep. me at, at Barmer. And then we uh, moved out to a station yep. and we weren't allowed to take the dogs out there. Mm. So that's when we sort of had to give it's them stopped. away. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny you talk about Barmer and Greyhound Racing because I've spoken to a lot of Greyhound trainers and participants over the years. And I always have a positive word about Barmer. It was a fantastic club, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. loved it. Great atmosphere. Yeah, and a yeah, really good atmosphere. Yeah. And uh, being new in the game, there was always someone there that was more than happy to help you and, and give you advice mm. and, on what to do and that, you know, so it was really good. We talk about Obama and Trots as well and the Berry Gallopers. Um, it's been a shame over the years to see the uh, decline of racing in that Riverland region, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, the Trots wanted to move out to the thoroughbred track uh, and that, but the committee at the thoroughbreds were saying, no, we're thoroughbreds yeah. and didn't want to get involved. 
So unfortunately now there's nothing up there. There's yeah. no uh, harness racing, there's no gallopers, and there's no dogs. Yeah, in it. So you know, the whole lot's gone. Yeah, I think a greyhound from memory stopped in about 2009 because they were running non-tab meetings. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was a shame to see racing almost vanished from that, from yeah, that area yeah. because it was um, a lot of the clubs up in that region back in the day were very popular. Um, now, of course, in this current day, um, uh, you're listed as a trainer, Suzanne, and Stephen drives a lot of the horses, but you do do a lot of the work together, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we work every morning. Um, so tell us about how that partnership in harness racing started for you two. Uh, Stephen was working uh, one horse, or his first horse, called Warura Patch, yep. going back in the day. And I made the mistake one day of asking him how to harness a horse. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm getting phone calls saying, uh, I'm running late, can you work the horse? So yeah. that's how I got into actually working a horse. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and then we sort of progressed from there. His uh, next one was a horse called Warura Chief. Yep. She won a few races with him and he eventually went to America. Yep. Uh, and that, and then we, we just worked together. You know, sometimes we've only got one horse. Uh, we've had up to five horses. Yep. Uh, and that, and we've just work them together and and help each other out. Yep. Stephen does our farrier work, so that always uh, is a big save. Yep. Uh, and that, and uh, I do the training, work out the training side of it and yep. the feeding side of it, and. Uh, We've had some success, not a huge amount, but we've had some success, which is good. Stephen, talk to us a little bit more about your driving. Um, now, you've obviously been driving for a few decades now. Uh, tell yes. us how it all started. Nick Rose. How it all started? Yep. Oh, hell. Nick Rose, sir. Uh... Mainly back to a fellow called Neil Minster back in the Riverland. Yep. He used to be a driver, and when I was working horses, and had to get someone else to drive, and that, then he gradually he talked me into it. Yeah. So I want you to send away and get your license. So that's about how it all started. Yeah, <laughs> it was a long time ago though. Do you remember your first winner? Ah, uh, yes, yes, that was. Don't ask me when it was though. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the horse? It was at, at a place called Poon Carey, out yep. between Wentworth and Broken Hill. Yeah. a picnic meeting. Um, so you've obviously raced at a lot of different tracks over the years, uh, Greyhounds, Gallopers and of course Trocks. Uh, what track stands out as your favourite that you've gone to over the years? Oh, I won Horse of the Year at Oyen. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Horse called uh, Casino Boy. Yep. Uh, eight starts for four wins, two seconds, two thirds. Yep. And that up there. Um, we had a lot of fun up there. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we lived at Renmark, we were sort of halfway between Mildura and Adelaide. So, yeah, that was good. Um, I, don't, I don't think I really had a real favourite track. Yeah. Um, but winning Horse of the Year was, mm. a, it was a big buzz. Yep. Uh, and that is, uh, there was a, a trainer called Ian McCullum. <laughs> he has since passed, but he was uh, he was leading contender for it. Yeah. Uh, and that, and uh, my horse won the... The last meeting of the, of the season and, and put me that one win in front of him and then uh, on the day he had to had to win one to get leading owner yeah and that and he took four horses up and none of them placed so I we ended up winning a uh, leading horse and leading owner yeah for that season so I'd uh, have to say that was a big buzz yeah, yeah I bet it was um now, of course, as we all know, every horse is different. Mm. But tell us a little bit more about some of the training routines and some of the some of the stuff you've implemented into your work over the years you've been involved. I think uh, is the fact that it's changed so much yeah. with the feed that's available these days. You uh, you, you have to adapt yep. to, it. and the horses of today are so different to the horses of when we started. I mean, they're a finer breed, they're a faster breed, uh, with all the breeding programs and that. And I've I've have to adapt. I've been very lucky. Uh, there's been a lot of trainers that I've been able to. So I say, can I ask you for some advice, please? You know, and nobody's ever turned me down. Yeah. They've always been happy to help me out and. Uh, and it has helped along the way, you know, and I've been able to adapt what I've been told to the horses I've got at the time, yeah. you know, and as they say, you can't feed all the horses the same. Yeah. Mm. You know, you can have 20 horses in the yard and 
you know, they wouldn't all be fed the same. So yeah. that is something I had to learn along the way too. So, yeah, it's, it's been a good learning curve asking the more uh, more professional trainers mm -hmm. uh, and that because they've always had horses coming in and out all the time and large amount of horses. Yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've learnt along the way and, as they say, you never stop learning. Yeah. Exactly right. Mm. Stephen, what are some of the main lessons you've taken out of driving over your time involved in the sport? Oh. I've had, had a lot of advice from a lot of good people. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tell me, or taught me a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Met one fellow in Melbourne, Jimmy O'Sullivan, got a few tips off him. Yep. He's a real good driver, Jim. Another old bloke. Years ago, old Alan Lum, he used yep. to have a good horse, good trotter, mm -hmm. Adios fan. Yep. He taught me a few things, a few tricks of the trade and that. Yep. Because you, over the years, you pick up bits and pieces, you know, from different people. Mm -hmm. People have been in the game for a long time. We've had a few mentors by the sound of it. Yeah. 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 No, that's, that's very good. Um, uh, some of the best horses you've had over the years. Um, if you had to make a list of your favourites, who would go be? My first horse as a trainer was Casino Boy. Yeah. And I won eight races with him. Yeah. He won the very last mile race they had at Globe Derby. Really? And yeah. he went 158.6. Yeah. When and was that around roughly? When was the last mile race? God, I don't know now. Yeah. It's been it's a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. And that, but the first race he won was at uh, Mildura. I didn't see the finish. I got so excited, I got chest pain. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even see the finish. I had to wait till I got home and actually watch the video yeah. and that. But he, he won the race by about 12 metres untouched yeah. for his first start. But yeah, it's Casino Boy. Then I had a mare called Leanne. Uh, yeah. And I had a, a horse out of her by, um, oh, I can't remember the sire, but uh, he was um, just a lot of dreams. Yep. And that, and he he won on a Saturday night. That was our first Saturday night win, uh, and that with him, and that. But he he went and missed. He uh, his heels on his back feet collapsed. Yep. And that so uh, he went by the wayside. But uh, Vegas Image, I won five races with him. Mm -hmm. Leanne, we won eight races with her. Um, and I suppose my next good one was Shutterbug. Yep. Uh, I won, uh, even though I was told she was no good. Mm -hmm. uh, and that'll won 12 races and 30 placings with her. Okay. And now I've got a horse called Chinoa Princess, yep. and that's a half sister. Mm -hmm. And that, but she's got a long way to go to catch up to her. <laughs> On Chinoa Princess, uh, it's had two wins now. Two yes. Wins. yes. That first career win, that <laughs> must have been very exciting because I remember calling it that day, mm -hmm. and uh, even I got excited for it <laughs> because. Um, Big Og's winner, yep. and it was a really good drive by you, Stephen. In, she goes back to a narrow lead. Tons of tenacity trying to get the better of it on the outside. Shanoa Princess in front. Tons of tenacity's asked to go. Shanoa Princess holding on. Shanoa Princess beats Tons of tenacity. Up. And it worked into the race at the right time. So a nice turn of foot up for straight and got up for the victory. Uh, take us back to some of the emotions you went through that day. Oh, emotions. I was yeah. crying. <laughs> Uh, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, where she was in the race, I thought there's no way she was going to get out. Yeah. And it was just lucky how, <laughs> how it worked out. Stephen just went up through the middle. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, got up at 150 to 1. I mean, I had $10 each way on it. <laughs> on, on fixed odds, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Uh, and that's so – but, yeah, I, I've been watching her. I watched her uh, have her first start as a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. She ran fourth. Yeah. And I liked her and I introduced myself to the owner-trainer because of the association with Shutterbug. Yeah. Um, and I sort of watched her and then I lost track of her, so I caught up with him and said, like, yeah. what's happened to her? And next thing uh, she was trialling at Gawler. Uh, yeah. Ryan Rahurik had her. Yeah. Uh, and that she ran third in a trial there. And then next thing she was on the internet for sale again. Yeah. So I uh, picked her up. Saw him. I saw him at the races and that, and mm. I said to him, you know, was, uh, I made an offer, mm -hmm. and he sort of looked at me, and I thought, oh, I don't think I'm going to get her. And three days later, he rang me and said, oh, if you still want her, you can have her. So yeah. that's how I come here. But she should have won her first start. Yeah. But there was a an elastic hobble elastic was yeah. on the track uh, previous tra race, and it hadn't been picked up, mm -hmm. and she j tried to jump it and caused yeah. her to gallop. But she would have won her first start for sure. Uh, and that, but then she won her second start. So yeah. that was yeah. cool.
fantastic. Um, yeah. Winsome Ruby, your trogger. Stephen, she's being a bit of a project uh, to try mm. and get trot. But when she trots, she goes super, doesn't she? Strawberry Mouse is squirting up on the inside as well, but she's running out of time. Winsome Ruby's still in front, though. Winsome Ruby's kicking. Kai Valley Kid's trying hard, lunging on the line. Winsome Ruby has held on to beat Kai Valley Kid. She does, yeah. She's got a couple of little problems about her, and that the, her biggest problem is she just will not settle. Yeah. If she, she settled, she'd be really good. Yep. As you say, when she does trot, she, mm -hmm. she's just about faultless when she's trotting. She's really on her game. Yeah. When she got her first career win, it was a couple of months ago, I remember interviewing yeah. you after the race. You must have been very excited that night to yes. drive her home. Yeah. Uh, the owner was very excited. Yeah. Yeah. That was his first win of her uh, years. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about your owners. Um, I've only got the one owner. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, two now, sorry. Um Winston Ruby is owned by uh, Vale Bester. Yep. Uh, he had he's had a couple of horses over the years, but uh, it's been thirty five years since he's had a winner. Yep. Uh, before her, and he bought her from Victoria. Um, supposed to have had some work done on her, but we found that she hadn't had a great deal and was very very green. Yep. But she wants to race everything, and that's our big problem. We've got to try and settle her down. Yeah. She's uh, out for a spell at the moment, and here, uh, early March, I got a phone call from Lou Ward, yep. who owns Hockey Greg, yep. asking me if I would give him a go. Yep. And that, I said, well, I said, I'm not a professional trainer, but I said, all I can do is work him and feed him the way I do, do our own. Yep. And he said, that's all I want. He said, I just want someone to give him a go. And, yep. uh, yeah. He's super. He's, he's, <laughs> run a, he's run a bundle of placings and he can oh, win her as well. So yes. Yeah, he's only had place. nine starts yeah. and he's uh, had a win and only been unplaced twice yeah. uh, in, in the nine starts. Fantastic. So the owner, when he ran second, his second stay, uh, after he won, he ran second and ran a super race. The owner was that emotional and that he could hardly talk on yeah. the phone to me. And Must love like, moments like that. Oh. It is. I mean, Super. it's a real buzz. Yeah. You put in a lot of work and a, and a lot of tears sometimes. You think, oh, what can I do next and what can I try next? And, yeah. Uh, and, that, and then you just hope that yeah. uh, what you it all works out. work out, that mm. it works out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the things, if you had to pinpoint a few things that you love about the sport, both of you? Mm. I think the involvement with other people. We've made a lot of friends. Yeah, we've made a lot of friends over the years. Met a lot of people on the way through. It's yeah, really good. Mm, no. Yeah, we took Casino Boy to Melbourne. He qualified for a final in Melbourne. Yep. He uh, ran the heat, won the heat at Mildura, and then qualified for the final. And we stayed with Jim O'Sullivan, and yeah. that and that was an experience. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing all the the trophies and all the plaques and everything he had for all the races he's won and that, and he was such an easy person to talk to and and that and then we left the horse down with him and he won his next start ran yep. second his next start then he won the next start after that mm. uh, so yeah yeah well Stephen and Suzanne like which we talk all day <laughs> it's been fantastic <laughs> um, uh, it's definitely um, highlighted a few things for me um, I've learned a lot more about you guys today so it's been an education for me as well and I'm sure it's been an education for the viewers thank you for joining us and thank you thank for coming you. on thank you. thank you thank you for joining us on Mobile Rolling again ladies and gentlemen uh, we'll be back uh, next week with another guest and uh, we'll be doing a few more things over the next couple of weeks as well so stay tuned to our social media platforms YouTube and our website for more information at mobilerolling.net and we'll catch you very soon